So uh, we're having a sit down with James Redmond, who's about Hello. to uh, MC tonight's show at the Comedy Cow. Um, Je- I wanted to ask you because obviously you made your your kind of name in acting. Obviously. Um, what what <laughs> took you into uh, stand up? Um, I always fancied it, to be honest. Um, I've been a fan of stand up since my teens. You know, seeing Billy Connolly and then Eddie Murphy um, was the big one for me and Eddie Izzard, all those guys and just I just always liked it, always used to go and watch, you know, every other weekend or whatever I'd see a show in Bristol or Liverpool when I was up there and um, just fancied trying it and um, I love it. Yeah. And, and, and when you first went into stand-up, what were the kind of challenges that you, you faced? Well, I mean the same as everybody else really in that you've got no experience and you're asking for a job. Um, but what's good about the UK circuit um, is it has this ladder, this hierarchy where you've got, as I'm sure you know, you've got the head, headliners paid X and then the opener paid about three quarters of that, same as the MC usually. And then you've got the middle spot who's often paid nothing yeah. or just expenses. So, you know, um, that's where you can get on. And it's good because you can watch everybody else and learn. And um, often you're sharing cars as well together a lot of companies kind of organize cars or what well, three or four of them do so you're sharing trips so you yeah. can ask ask advice and just be around the right people and everyone's pretty friendly once you're off the open mic circuit which is quite cutthroat yeah everyone's a bit sort of competitive and the gigs the the, the gig audiences are full of you know the acts friends and they only are they only laugh at their friend you know and don't yeah. laugh at everyone else a bit and everyone's sort of you know slagging off all the big stars, you know, so, so you'll go to a, a night where there's 20 different people on and you've got five minutes to do and you're sitting around uh, and everyone's talking about how rubbish Michael McIntyre is and you're thinking, well, I mean, I think he's brilliant. Uh, he's not my favourite, but I think he's a fantastic talent and yeah. um, you must be amazing, you mate. And then, oh no, you're not, you're just a bit weird. <laughs> but everyone's a bit kind of like that. Everyone thinks they're a comedy expert first. And then finds out the reality. Yeah, and then 100 gigs in, you think, I've died 95 times. <laughs> um, you know, it's weird. You, get, you, you do get the odd act. You'll, you'll, you'll see them who die on their asses and then go, smashed it, loved it. Oh, I can't wait to go back on. And everyone, everyone, else, everyone else is going, okay, um, yeah, you did really well, mate. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But you didn't get any laughs, did you? It's weird. And that's, that's the key thing, obviously, isn't it? It's yeah. Hard. Do you think that, because obviously I've been having a go at the open mic nights, and mm. exactly as you described, you've got 20 people, you've got five yeah. minutes, they're really, really strict on their five minutes. Yeah. And I've found that I'm rushing through the material, trying yeah. to get to that five minutes. We were here last night and uh, had a chance to kind of slow it down a little bit. Yeah. And that really seemed to help, just yeah. taking your time and being able to enjoy well, it's it. It's different, you know, when you go on at a professional night, they don't know that you're new. Yeah. They don't know what the hi- hierarchy is or the, or the ladder, so they just think, oh, okay, here's an- another one who's going to be as good as the last one. So they're, they've invested in you, kind of, you know, emotionally yeah. and financially, of course, they've paid to get in. Mm. So they're ready for you to be good. Um, so they're not, you know, sitting in the back of a room going, oh, he's not my mate, and I've seen 15 rubbish acts so far, he'll be rubbish as well. Yeah. They're expecting someone better, so it does help. I mean, going back to myself, as I often do, um, <laughs> I had a bit of stagecraft from doing acting and presenting first, so yeah. that helped me at the open mic nights because I'd come on, I wouldn't be as nervous as the rest of them. Mm. I've seen some brilliant acts, you know, great writers just fall by the wayside because they just came on stage and were just sort of shuffling and embarrassed and standing in the shadow and not really having the mic at the right level and, yeah. and talking over the laughs that they got and just, you know, you think, oh, you're so good, just slow down, you know, look at the audience a bit look confident and enjoy they'll come it. with you. Yeah, yeah, that's really the main thing it. is enjoy it, yeah. So tonight you're gonna to be emceeing. Yeah. Uh, last night you were here um, doing a Opening, turn. yeah, I was, yeah. And um, what's, what's the big difference for you between the two? Well, supposedly, when you do a set, um, you're just doing your best 20 minutes um, or 30 if you're closing often, um, available. So you'll see acts doing stuff they've been doing for 20 years or, you know, they've just done it at Edinburgh. So it could be a year old or whatever. Um, but probably less than that. Um, whereas, um, as an MC, your job isn't really to be funny. Um, the best MC I've seen is um, Jared Christmas, right. and uh, I asked him for some advice when I first started, and he said the main thing he's learned is don't try and be funny. All you are is the guy who's their friend, who goes, everything's all right, don't be nervous, you won't get flattened or you know, shouted at. These are the rules, turn your phones off, you know, don't, don't chat. 
Um, you can go for a wee at this point. The, the bar's closed. Just tell them the rules. How it's going to work. Yeah. And then warm them up. Just chat to them a little bit. And if it's funny, it's funny. But your main job is to make them relaxed, you know. Of course, you do hope that you're funny as well. But I think too many MCs go on and try and be funny. Yeah. And the easiest way to sort of do that is to take the mickey out of someone. Mm. And often you can lose a room because everyone goes, that's a bit nasty. You know, um, and they'll forget to do the main thing, which is welcome them, tell them the rules, you know, phones off, face the front, don't talk, the bar's closed, these are the in interval times, whatever, and um, make them feel relaxed. And um, you, you touched a little bit upon uh, people who have been in Edinburgh. Yeah. Kind of thing. So the whole point of this documentary is that um, I'm going to try and learn stand up in a year. Yeah. And the goal is to kind of get to Edinburgh Impossible. and do a show at Edinburgh. <laughs> well, I've been told this, <laughs> yeah. um, and I'm starting to realise just how big a, big a task it is. But what kind of advice would you give to somebody who's, who's facing that impossible task? Well, it is impossible because, you know, you'll ask someone like Louis C.K., you know, if you ever get the chance to meet him, I, I haven't, but I'm sure he would say, oh, I'm learning every, every day, yeah. you know. So you never really learn, but I guess the closest you get to being good at it is when you're gigging every night pretty much like you are at Edinburgh you know the guys there do four five six gigs a day yeah you know they've got their own show and they go and do bits of other people's shows to promote their own show um, and I guess then you're really you know being creative writing new stuff adding bits to what you're doing and I guess that's the way I mean Mark Olver um, was one of the first comics I saw live and met in Bristol um, and he was saying he's a great M MC as well as an act he was saying all you've got to do is comedy miles, just gig as often as you possibly can. And I went with a company called Mirth Control um, because um, everyone said, well, most of their gigs are outside London. Um, the critics don't go to them and you can just learn. And they've got so many gigs. So I signed with them um, after about six months of stand up. So this is seven years ago and just did sort of five or six gigs a week, you know, for no money or for expenses, yeah. and just try to learn, because you're growing in the dark then, you're not being criticised, you know, mm. so you can be shit, yeah. you know, um, without anyone knowing, and then when you're ready to do an open spot at the bigger clubs around the country, you know, they think you're new, oh, he's really good, this guy, yeah. they don't know you've, got, you've done 400 gigs, yeah. you know. So how do you find it as well when you're, you, you know, talking about travelling around? A lot of the stuff I've done so far has been in London because there's a very busy open yeah. mic scene there. Yeah. Um, how do you find it getting out and about around the country? What are the hard things about being a comedian on the road? Well, I mean, I was lucky that I had some money behind me. I just left a telly job, had some savings. Nobody wanted to do it. Um, so I didn't mind losing money. Um, but yeah, that's, that's the main thing, is that fitting it in with your day job. I mean, most of the comics I know who came through were doing jobs that fit around their comedy rather than vice versa. You know, got, uh, I know loads of people who said, oh yeah, um, I was really good at it, but I gave it up because, um, yeah, it was just um, really hard to get around the country. And you go, well, actually you had it as a hobby, really. Yeah. You didn't really. I mean, there are a few acts who've made it like that, you know, but very few really because um if you really want to do it you've got, i mean teaching or whatever you know you can perhaps fit it in you can leave it for and still get to the places occasionally yeah yeah lots of ex-teachers are are comics you know well i think it would for, certainly for things like edinburgh having the yeah. summer yeah having oh, something where huge. you can go okay huge, yeah. i can commit to that and spend a bit of time up there yeah so i'm hoping it works well yeah um, anyway, we better go and get ready for yeah. tonight's show. Thank you very much for taking the time to chat to us. Yeah, um, pleasure and all the best. Thank In, you enjoy much. it. You've got no chance. <laughs>